Okay, you're watching Fat Bidet Knows Everything and it's called Fat Bidet Knows Everything because I really do know everything. And this week, this particular week, it's going to be proven that I do know everything because we're going to be talking about how Zanazli at fatbidin.com was mentioned in Parliament by a minister. And, uh, well, this episode is also brought to you by uh, the Nasi Lemak by the Machi at the corner in front of my house. So, here's the deal. I wrote an article for my column in Malaysia Kini about the FINAS Act and I'm sure you are all familiar with um, the controversy and the issue that has been surrounding the FINAS Act 1981 and the Communications Minister Saifuddin Abdullah. Now, what has happened is that uh, if you remember, Al Jazeera um, did a documentary, they produced a documentary about how the Rohingyas and foreign migrant workers uh, were being treated in Malaysia during the COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdown during the MCO. If you remember, there were lots of footages of these uh, migrant workers, migrants being uh, hauled up by the authorities, by the police, handcuffed apparently, you know, and all that, uh, and brought into depots and uh, not being treated humanely uh, because of the COVID-19 thing, right? And, well, Al Jazeera did a documentary about that. They tried to get the government's uh, reaction, but the government refused. So, uh, it, the documentary was a little bit one-sided because of that, because they tried to get the government to explain, but the government refused to any interviews by Al Jazeera. So, there you go. You know, the government then suddenly started saying that, hey, Al Jazeera, where was your shooting permit and license? Right, because according to the FINAS Act 1981, Anybody who wants to shoot a film or a documentary needs to apply for a license and they need to have they need to have a license from FINAS, which is the National Film Development Board, and you need to apply for a shooting permit. Right? And they said Al Jazeera does not have that license. And no, no, they don't have that permit to shoot. Al Jazeera in their defense says that it's news gathering, so it's not really a filming, it's not really a film or a feature film. Now, I wrote an article saying that hey. Yeah, we know that this act has been going on for a long time now, right? Um, but, you see, but it has never really been enforced. It's been, you know, it was enacted in 1981. It has been enforced, I've seen personally. Uh, it has been enforced on like feature films and all that, lah. feature film productions. They will go and apply for, the, for the, the shooting permit and all that. But, you know, from my personal experience, people shooting documentaries for television or independent documentaries and all that, they don't get the permit. They, 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 just, they just shoot and it has never really been enforced. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, when, when the minister came out and spoke about it, Saifuddin, he actually said that, hey, you know, everybody needs to apply for a permit. Everybody needs to have a license. Including those of you who are shooting for YouTube, for TikTok, for Facebook, for any social media platform, even if you are an individual. Now let me tell you, to get a license from FINAS, you need to be a registered Sundarian Berhad, a private limited company with a paid up capital of 50,000 ringgit. Right? You have to go through like a selection process, you have application process, and then you have to apply for, if you want to shoot something, you have to apply for a permit seven days prior to your shoot. It's not going to happen, you know, especially now, we have a video, and film is already so accessible, it's like writing. Everybody writes and reads, right? That's how video is right now, because you have it in your handphone, you have the capabilities in your mobile phone, the capabilities on your computer, you know? Yeah, so it's quite stupid lah. Okay, anyway, that's in my column. You can read my column, I'll link it, okay? You can read my column. Now, the minister, my column, read my column, right? Because I kind of tagged him online right and the title of the column was uh, my suggestions for the to how to amend the finas act to the minister or to suggest you know my suggestions to the minister to you know uh, uh, amend the finas act and all that um, now 
And in it also, I make a few suggestions. I say, look, if you're really looking for suggestions, I, you know, publish my email address, say, come call me, right? And guess what? The minister tweeted me, responded to my tweet. I said, yeah. He read the article. He thinks it's interesting. He's going to get his um, team to call me. And his, his team did call me, right? Uh, so we're going to arrange for a meeting soon. Um, and suddenly, we're during a parliamentary sitting yesterday, right? If you're watching this today, it was yesterday. Today is, yeah, so he was in parliament on the 4th of August. The minister was uh, giving an address in parliament and he mentioned me, right? Uh, of course, being the narcissistic self that I am, downloaded the video, you can watch it now. Kita mengambil kira banyak pandangan, uh, walaupun kita belum menubuhkan jawatan kuasa untuk mengkaji Akta Finas, tetapi kita telah menerima banyak pandangan daripada ramai uh, penggiat seni dan izinkan saya yang uh, yang berhormat uh, tuan yang dipetua uh, memetik misalnya uh, Zain Azli Zain Azli adalah seorang jurnalis Zan, so, Zan Azli ya sorry Zan Azli uh, fatbidin.com ya uh, beliau seorang uh, wartawan juga seorang uh, pembuat uh, filem dokumentari seorang penulis dan juga seorang ahli akademik uh, saya ingat pada 3 Ogos, yakni semalam, beliau menulis sebuah artikel di Malaysia kini yang sangat baik. Tajuk dia dengan izin, Suggestions for the Minister to Amend the Finas Act. Saya tahu beliau pun kritik saya hebat juga. Tetapi, saya fikir ini antara tulisan yang baik, yang awal, yang mencadangkan beberapa perkara untuk diambil kira ketika kita membaiki ataupun meminda akta finas. Termasuklah soal perbezaan antara video uh, dan film, uh, kemudian menentukan misalnya uh, license yang ditebutkan oleh yang berumat lemah pantai, uh, jenis license dan uh, pemberian license itu dengan izin kalau saya bacakan certification is not determined by the content. Ini perkara yang sangat fundamental kerana yang dirisaukan oleh Zan Azli dan saya rasa ramai juga ialah soal Bagaimana kalau sesuatu peruntukan itu uh, dengan izin open to abuse? Ini perkara-perkara yang uh, kita ambil kira dengan uh, dengan serius sekali. And so, there it is. So, here's the thing. In my article, I talk about the concern that I have of how government regulates things like this. Uh, when you want to shoot something, you want to create a film, you want to shoot a documentary, you want to make a video, and you have to apply um, for like a permit to shoot it, um, the the way that the Finas Act is um, is designed and structured right now, uh, there is no clear definition of what constitutes a feature film, what is a documentary, what is a you know a, a, a informal video for social media. There's no definition in that sense. So actually, if the government wanted to enforce the act, they can do it in any way they want, and they probably they, and they can abuse it like how they're doing it with Al Jazeera. Right. Uh, in fact, if they want, they can go at to every individual YouTuber or anybody who like posts videos on Instagram or on Facebook about their kids playing in the evening or, or doing crazy stuff and all that. The, if you don't have a permit, technically the government can come after you and you can get in trouble. Right. So it can be abused. So that's what I'm afraid of. Right. So some of the suggestions that I'm making. Um, that I would like to make if I get a chance to see the minister. We are arranging for a meeting, Mr. Minister. Don't disappoint me. I hope we can actually meet, right? Um, uh, and his team has actually asked me to like gather some few industry experts and all that to come and meet together. Um, so um, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid, right? If this regulation thing, if, it come, if it's up to me, personally, I would say you shouldn't have any re uh, regulations. It should be free. Anybody can produce anything they want. Right, uh, but I understand, you know, especially when it comes to like commercial shooting, commercial films, and all that. Um, there is like tax involved. There is revenue. There's money, uh, economy. You know, it, it runs the economy and all that. And there's an industry, so a bit of regulation is required. Uh, you know, but I just hope that one of my biggest concerns is that for people to apply for the certificate or for the permit to shoot. It should not be regulated in a way where the authorities look at the content that is being produced. No, right? Because if you look at the content, right, and the content determines whether it's going to be approved, your permit is going to be approved or not, that is open to abuse. And then the authorities can say, we don't like this content, we like this content, unless it's clearly defined, 
Okay, so that's one of my biggest uh, concerns. Uh. There are several other uh, uh, suggestions that I have also, um, um, such as, you know, we want to make it more accessible for everybody to make films, to make documentaries. I'm a documentary filmmaker. I make films, right? And I want to promote it to the younger generation. And more, I, I feel that it's better if a lot of people start making films as well. Uh, and uh, we need to have a certain law that does not, I guess, prohibit the industry from growing. Right? So that is also important. Um, yeah, that is, what I, that is what I have right now. And I'm also thinking of other, other things I'm going to bring up to the minister when I do meet him. So here's what I'm going to do. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> my uncle, my uncle <laughs> told me <coughs> that it's a bad idea <laughs> to eat while talking. But I rubbish his advice. And now I'm paying for it. Because the sambal went into my <coughs> nose. Ah, okay. Okay. Okay, anyway. Yeah, so, I'm going to make it an open call here right now. For those of you who are watching this video, what would you like me to bring up to the minister, Saifuddin Abdullah, when I do see him? You can please comment below. Right? Uh, comment and <coughs> let me know what you think should be amended in the FINAS Act, right? Okay. Oh. <coughs> but this is good nasi lemak though. So, now we are in the section where I talk about something that is interesting to me and I'm going to highlight it. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this nasi lemak. <coughs> from this machi, which is really good. Uh, she opens a small table at the corner in Kota Kemuning. Uh, if you drive by into Kota Kemuning, you take the first exit into Kota Kemuning, you see a roundabout, you take a three o'clock, you go straight, straight, and you see a big onking shop on your right, and there's a corner, there you'll see the machi in a small table with a yellow umbrella. But she only opens in the morning, okay, from like 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. till about 11, so. Yeah, I'm going to recommend that. Okay, so um, share this video. Uh, thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs up if you don't like it. Whatever it is, follow us on all our social media platforms at FatBidden. <laughs> or go to FatBidden.com. Good sambal. To get everything. You've been watching to FatBidden knows everything. I've got three kids, one wife, and me to support. So you've got to like, you know, help fund my life. So you've actually can go to the Fat Bidin e-store, right? I'm gonna link it below, I'm gonna link it below, right? And you can get actually like Fat Bidin merchandise, right? And most of it are, well actually books are. I used to sell DVDs and films and all that, but hey, everything's available on YouTube now. So now if you want to get Fat Bidin merchandise, it's mostly books. So I've got books here, I've got books here. See, see, see like this book? This is called uh, The Adventures of a Care Light in Afghanistan. It's a graphic novel, see? See, graphic novel which I uh, wrote. Uh, and illustrated with my, with my buddy Apan, right? Uh, it's a non-fiction one. It's about my time in Afghanistan shooting a documentary for a month uh, when I was there. See, see, I'm a war journalist, right? So it's a really good book, right? Uh, I've got this non-fiction novel. It's called Operation Nasi Krabu, Finding Patani in an Islamic Insurgency. This book I wrote because I spent like a, I spent some time in Southern Thailand where there's a war there. You all know there's a war there, right? In Patani, right? I shot a documentary there which was banned for broadcast. But hey, they allowed me to publish a book. And if you get the book, there is a QR code at the back, right? There's a QR code at the back which allows you to watch it for free online. Oh, where's the QR code? Where's the QR code? Ah, there's the QR code, right? It's online, meaning you scan the QR code, you go to my YouTube channel. Lah. Okay, um, I've got another book. This is called Journal Dad, the Chronicles of a Journalist Who Happens to Be a Father. It's a, it's a compilation of my articles, my column when I was writing for the Malaysian Insider. It's all about like me being a journalist and raising a family at the same time. It's really funny. It's funny. It's funny. My best-selling book. Liberal, Malay and Malaysian, Writings of a Walking Contradiction. This is a compilation also of my uh, column in the Malaysian Insider. This one focuses more on like politics, race, uh, demonstration, democracy and religion and things like that. It's funny too. All my books are funny because I'm a funny guy, right? Yes, I am. And if you like films, 
I sell this book. See, I wrote this book with my buddy Wan Chun Hong. It's a guide to filmmaking, indie filmmaking. Uh, every chapter talks about one aspect of filmmaking and it, every chapter also interviews one like a uh, really prominent Malaysian filmmaker. It's really good. You can get all these books at the Fat Bidin e-store. Come on, feed my kids.